What do you get when you combine over 125 years of camera lens heritage and the latest in autofocus technology? The Zeiss Bodice. Engineered exclusively for Sony mirrorless full-frame sensor cameras, the Zeiss Bodice delivers perfect corner-to-corner -corner image quality. With enhanced protection against the elements, the Zeiss Bodice is built to help you push past life's obstacles. Zeiss Bodice. The perfect lens for wherever your passion leads you. Welcome to Full Exposure On Location, coming to you from Jump in Austin, Texas at the 2019 South by Southwest Film Festival. We have some fabulous guests on tap, conversations with directors and cinematographers of some of the most inventive, funny, moving, and important documentary and narrative indie films that screen here in Austin. Sasha Gordon is a Russian-born, now New York City-based, award-winning writer, director, and composer. Following on her critically acclaimed 2016 romantic comedy, It Had to Be You, Sasha's South by Southwest entry was Maggie, a dramedy episode pilot about motherhood. Maggie premiered at the Sundance Film Festival and went on to win Best Pilot at South by Southwest. I, I really loved your film. I Thank loved you. it. I mean, um, I, you know, it's you can. I think you can tell how good something works is if you really want more when it's yeah. when it's over. You know, so I mean, the characters are great. It, um, it, very natural. Uh, um, it seemed improvisational almost, uh, which I think is what's yes, so fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how did you come up with the idea? Um, so I had a baby a couple of years ago, and. Um, I found the initial experience to be, you know, less rosy than I had been told it would be. <laughs> um, I think as new moms often, you know, there's this expectation that it has to be... You were led astray. I was led astray, <laughs> that it has to be kind of the most amazing moment of your life. It is amazing, it but... It is amazing, but it's, it's very, nothing very, to prepare you very for, right? difficult, yeah. And, you know, I think that there's this kind of... Um, black and white duality where either it's magical or you have postpartum depression and that's why it's not magical and I think there's not a whole lot of gray area where you know you could not have postpartum depression but it can still be very difficult at times um, so you know I was definitely in that kind of middle ground and um, I actually just really wanted to get out of the house and I ended up signing up for a stand-up comedy class <laughs> And because that was something, you know, I've always loved all, all my prior films were comedies and I've always been really into stand up, but it was nothing I'd ever oh, explored. Cool. And a friend of mine took one and he really recommended this particular class. So I signed up for the class and um, the characters in the class are very much, you oh. know, the inspiration for <laughs> For the pilot, were and any of the people in the stand-up scene were they from your? Yes. Uh, um, oh. Well, so none of the people in my class um, made it to the pilot, but a lot of the people in the pilot are from the stand-up scene, um, and I kind of specifically looked for that for that authenticity because it's just such a the people in stand-up are such it's such a particular vibe, and there there's so many just awesome weirdos, <laughs> and um, so I knew for it to feel authentic that I needed to cast from, you know, from the real yeah. world. Um, so yes, yeah, so I took that class and then, you know, I definitely realized stand up wasn't necessarily something I wanted to do, but it, it was this very was inspiring, rich, yeah, yeah, it was a rich uh, uh, <laughs> moment yeah. of, uh, inspiration. And, um, uh, I, and then I, you know, I knew that I wanted to do something about new motherhood since that's kind of very, very much where I was at. And pretty much thematically, everything I do is always about kind of the dissonance between expectation and reality. My, my first feature was about being proposed to and throwing up and thinking that it was going to be so magical and romantic, but it being kind of more like a horror movie moment. So that, that tends to be the thread in, in kind of what I, I find in hindsight funny, <laughs> um, are kind of big milestones in life that turn out to be very different than you expect. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I think it's, it's, uh, very uh, uh, expected or, or customary to see uh, when a filmmaker makes a film that's uh, that has that resonates somehow that there's something very personal in the project that they can relate to yeah. and that's why they did it right yeah. so so what I mean the the whole the whole scene with the nanny, the nanny and everything thing, yeah. yes is so. hilarious. <laughs> Thank uh, you. 
<laughs> so that um, is is uh, not quite as personal as the, or not quite as you know based in life, based life as the comedy class, but it definitely you know it was definitely my brainchild insofar as so. Um, you know, when it came time to look for a babysitter or nanny, when I went back to work, I had a lot of friends telling me, you know, whatever you do, don't get someone young and attractive, <laughs> your husband. And in my head, I'm like, ah, that would be me and our family. And um, I just thought, you know, it would be fun. Just that idea immediately then came to mind, the idea of a mom like lusting the, after uh, The her, total opposite like of what the, you'd the expect. Flipping, yes, yeah. yes. And I had um, a baby monitor and I was just thinking, I, I just like this a, is just a some, video monitor like yeah, that. Yeah, watching. I mean, we didn't have a nanny then, so it was just for the baby. Right. But it just kind of came to me. I was like, it would be so funny to see a mom like <laughs> rather than watching the baby on the nanny cam, watching the nanny, and for all the wrong reasons. Um, so that actually was kind of the 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 little uh, I don't know the 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 germ seed of kind of I knew I wanted to see that scene, and then I built the rest around it. Yeah. Well, it's hilarious. And, Thank you. Um, I'm, so I'm wondering what's the track now uh, uh, so, for, the, for that? Uh, so basically, you know, we're, we're pitching it to streaming services and cable. It's not really a network show, as you saw. It's, it's a little edgier, darker. Who cares? Yeah. It doesn't have to be. <laughs> um, so we're going to be going out with it, I mean, pretty much right now. Um, and uh, we'll see what happens. I, I'd love to see it developed into a, you know, regular half hour comedy show. Um, you know what, it reminds me a little of, did you ever see Catastrophe? I love Catastrophe, it, totally. It, it has the same sort of feel, yeah. it has the, the the dark humor and the yeah. reality of that, which yeah. I love that series. Yeah, it's yeah. great, I yeah. love that show too. Yeah. So. Um, would you would you see this developing as a feature as well? I mean, is that a possibility? No. Um, I mean, if somebody came knocking and said, please, I, I obviously would entertain the thought. But um, I have another project I'm working as a feature, so I, I, I kind of, that's where my head okay. is at feature-wise. Um, also, I feel like what I enjoyed about the pilot is because it was shorter, um, you're able to have a certain amount of whimsy and freedom where you don't have to kind of track a long story and you know obviously some the show like Louie or things like that I'd been watching also um, I liked how on Louie some of his even 20 minute episodes were split up into two mm -hmm. that had nothing to do with each other and I think that affords you this freedom to be a little more goofy mm -hmm. and and that's that's kind of the the genre and the tone that I was interested in in exploring with this particular theme I feel like with a feature it would really have to get more weighty mm -hmm. and then but know. as a as a series, does, yeah. what's the cha what's this challenge as a as a writer uh, as a, in a series versus a narrative uh, f feature, where on a series you you, you have to you have to carry for ten or thirteen yeah. episodes. Yeah, yeah. So you you actually see that in your mind as something that you could carry through. Yeah, I think so. I mean, again, I think it depends on what kind of show you want to have. I feel like there's shows like Thirty Rock or Louis where. It's not so much you you can't wait to see the next episodes because you can't wait to see what happens, but more because you just can't wait to kind of have that laugh again. Right, right. And I definitely see this show a little more as that, a little, you know, more for um, for the whimsy, for the laughs, for the tone, and not not like a true detective mm -hmm. where, you know, you're just... Not like, a lot oh of whimsy God. and true yeah, detective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I definitely have a, you know, a trove of mom stories that I think have a pretty particular point of view to them that I think a lot of people would yeah. find enjoyable. Talk a little bit about the look. The look. Of the show. Yeah. How did you, um, how did you kind of arrive at, who, who shot it first uh, of all? So my DP, my cinematographer is uh, Bobby Webster. We went to Tish together. He shot my feature. He shot everything I've done. Um, you know, if I'm honest, the look was very much informed by our teeny tiny budget. <laughs> so there was that. But, you know, in truth, we also, I knew I wanted it to feel very immediate and real. And, you know, same as with the casting. Um, I just wanted it to feel authentic, even if sometimes it went off, off the reservation a little. Yeah. Um, so we shot handheld. We, and like with the improvisational element and everything like that, you know, you have to have room for your actors to be able to be in the moment and move around and it can't be so um, locked down. So we shot handheld. There was pretty minimal lighting. Um, I just, I knew from, from my first feature kind of that if your budget is very tight, um, 
in some ways it's better to put the burden on the location. So if you find if you find location that's already good and looks good, then you know, if a space is hideous, there's nothing your DP is going to be able to do to make it look good. <laughs> um, so I really focused on that, kind of just finding two spaces that I felt looked true to the story mm -hmm. and um, pleasant to, to the eye. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, we lit. And um, But Bobby and I have worked a bunch before, so that made it, we have a shorthand. How long, how long did, did it take? What was the schedule? Two days. <laughs> <What> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was very fast. <laughs> wow. Wow. <sighs> Yeah. I mean, especially uh, with allowing room for improvisation, that's been yeah. incredible two days. Yeah. Um, we shot basically one day in one location, one day in the wow. other location. And I you know, I got a, a chance to rehearse with the actors a little bit on the phone, actually. so that <laughs> the Because they were both out in L.A. Um, wow. So that gave some room for me to... Um, Kind of hone it to their voices, and uh, but I, I offered the roles to them. No, I knew I wanted those two people for for the leads, so um, that made it easier too. I was kind of writing with them in my mm -hmm. in my head. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Gosh. So what's uh, so we started talking about that a little bit earlier, but what's um, what's the uh, result been from Sundance and and from here? Do you think? I mean, from here, it's it was you know you I, have we haven't it? even been you reviewed have? yet or anything, oh, okay, so I, I'm oh. very curious how that will go. So I don't know. Um, and from Sundance, um, again, you know, we we were able to get. I feel like it got our foot in the door into a lot of these places um, to try and sell it, and uh, we'll see how that that goes. Um, we I don't have we we haven't had a single actual meeting yet. Like basically, they waited until. Um, Sundance was over, and then they knew I was heading here, and kind of a week ago, our producers and the reps sent it out, um, and now they're going to start schedule pitches. But do, do, do a, lot of the, a lot of the screening links go out pretty early, right? So um, is there, does it, because I was... We didn't do that. Oh, you so didn't do that. We didn't, we didn't go out with it before the screening, um, kind of the feeling, I'm with UTA, and their feeling was that, um, I think it's a relatively new platform the episodic thing at festivals so um they're still kind of feeling out how to deal with it well two things one is my pilot because it's more of a proof of concept since it's not a full right. 20 it's not like you can actually sell it right. so then it's more about going out and then pitching the series some right. of the other stuff at sundance was actually you know already finished right. not not even just one episode but six so they had a whole 90 minute thing so right. they they were in a position where they could show it and just sell it as is so i think for shows like that it was a little different whereas for ours um we screened it we wanted to see how it played and mm -hmm. um see where it was headed here mm -hmm. and then you know basically start pitching it well there's also i mean i i heard about a film at, at sundance that um uh was done by a, a basically a fellowship uh filmmaker and um, immediately got a distribution deal with Fox Searchlight yeah. uh, which was sort of I was told kind of like a kind of a, like a sign that maybe Fox is uh, kind of making a little play for the Oscars in shorts mm. so um, do you see do you see anything like that potentially happening I think it's so much plays like a pilot and not a short I mean that, it, yeah you know, for better or for worse I don't really feel like we we haven't even applied to any festivals that don't have an episodic section I see um, so no I mean I think it's either t uh, episodic or nothing <laughs> yeah yeah so um, do you want to talk about your uh, feature that sure. you said you're, okay. um, so my feature um, is also a comedy, more of a dramedy. It's a coming of age um, film about immigration and it's basically, again, very personal about my, I'm, I was born in Russia, about my coming to New York in the kind of gritty New York of the How old were you 80s. when you came to New York? I was 10, oh. Oh, wow. uh, late 80s, early 90s. In the script, I made myself 13 to allow for more kind of romantic fumbles. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of a eighth grade ladybird, but immigration story. Um, about a family struggling to assimilate to New York and um, the my character kind of going through puberty, learning English, a lot of kind of very dark <laughs> comedy around that, and uh, but ultimately very much kind of a feel good movie. Oh, so so, so where, where are you at in that? Um, so I just finished the script. I'm applying for grants and. Um, uh, and then UTA sending it out to producers to kind of 
pursuing both routes. I'll apply to the Sundance Labs and all of that. Cool. But um, I'd really like to make it for something like my first feature was half a million dollars. This one I really want to do for like two or three, ideally. So it really has a shot at broader reaching a broader audience. Great. Well, good luck with that. Thank you. There's, I, 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 I'm going to probably ask a lot of people this question because right before we got here, there was a there was a story in IndieWire that I was thinking on the way here. It's yeah. a question I never ask filmmakers, yeah. and that and that is they ask 30 filmmakers, how do you make a living? Mm. <laughs> and for independent I filmmakers, have an easy answer <laughs> yeah, I write jingles and I and film scores. I, I make a living you're, as a composer. Because you're a composer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, they, I'm very lucky in that regard. Well, plus you've had some some quite. Uh, some quite notor notor some notoriety in the scores you've written. Yeah, um, yeah, I've done some Amazon TV shows and you know movies that have won like Sundance Grand Jury, that kind of thing. So um, I'm very lucky in that regard. And you know, just in the last year or two since having the baby, it's been hard to really pursue two full time <laughs> careers. <laughs> Can imagine so how you I'm do it. So I'm putting more of the breadwinning burden on my husband and really focusing more on writing and directing. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Well, that's really interesting. You know, I mean, you hear a lot of different career tracks about, you know, um, I know several filmmakers who are in branded content yeah. and, you know, their day job is producing that kind of stuff or yeah. whatever, but I haven't met a composer who's also yeah. a screenwriter. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Well, it was really great talking to you. Very I wish we had nice more time, but you thank you well. for coming. Thank you so much. Really good luck with Maggie. Thank it's you. It's hilarious. I <laughs> know it's, I know it's going to do something. I really thank do. You. I mean, that's the feeling I have. Thanks so much. Thanks for All coming right, by. to meet you. That's all for now on Full Exposure from South by Southwest. In Austin, MJ Johnson was our director of photography. Dan Walnicki audio engineered and edited. Huda Khalid associate produced. A very special thanks to Laurie Welts at Film Fatales for introducing us to the filmmakers who appeared on the show.